So I'm doing, trying something a little different on a large scene here. And what I'm using is these rolls of very soft tooling. Now, stronger tooling would actually probably be better. However, I found this stuff absorbs into the felting technique. So what you can see here is, there it is in the back, and I've just laid this on. I haven't actually punched it in yet. But it's quite easy to join together, and it does disappear, so it makes a good foundation. But the other thing I found really interesting that I've tried is by raising up the foot. Normally I've had that quite low and tried to really punch this and make it stiff. However, using this tooling, I can keep it softer and therefore a lot, it sort of feels a lot nicer. It's easier to punch and I can do stuff with it. So this will eventually become a scene. I'm only just felting it at the moment and I'll show you what the remaining, I have to put the animals on it and stuff but they're sort of trees. It, it's meant to be very um, impressionist but whether or not it actually looks like a scene. I think eventually it will once I put the animals, here's the foreground, here's the background but I'm, I'm gradually building this up and it works very well. It, it, it is punching but it's soft which is nice rather than super hard. I think that's a nice effect. So I shall show you me punching away. Because this is so large, as always, you can see I'm using my uh, sewing table. And it does help a lot. So what I'm doing first is to join the two sections together. So by punching the wool across this, it just makes it hold into place so it doesn't skid so much. And then once it's attached, it just makes it a lot easier just to just go. So you can hear because it's really soft, it, it's not making a lot of crunching noise, which is a nice, I haven't broken as many needles doing this as I would normally when I'm doing a much heavier type work. So there's a bit of heavier, heavier uh, roving or wool top. Gradually getting this to settle down, make sure it's attached properly. Now, the one problem I had, which would have made my life a lot easier when doing this, is I would, I didn't, don't have any high density tooling which I could then punch through so it would hold it into place a lot easier to keep it from moving around a bit but I've just sort of accepted that as part of my challenge is to just keep holding the fat the, the wool in place while moving this so it doesn't drag too much so it does change the look a bit from <coughs> the randomly placed stuff but I can always go over and add a bit more more color on top. I'm just randomly going over this at the moment just to hold it all in place. yet, as you can see, so just pull those two bits together and do a little back and forth across to get the two parts joined together. And I can always add a bit more if it decides not to uh, bind as well as I would like.
is the hardest part, is because I don't have a giant piece of tubing. I've had to sort of glue the glue the, the strips together. Um, but it works. It's just a little more difficult to cross the seam to make sure everything sticks in place. But once it's done, it's it's done. It all so we're almost we're almost there. Join together now we can do the standard just punch it all down so to turn it into the scene that I want. It's much easier once everything is sort of locked in place. One thing I really like about it is it feels soft. It's very lovely to feel this. Whereas normally I make them too, I think I over punch. But that's a different technique. In this case, I'm not worried about the reverse side actually. I've decided to use this side. I want, I'm happy with it as a wall hanging to be soft. Like, see some holes there. So I just need to add a bit more foundation under those, punch those through, and all will be healed. So here's my natural wool roving or top, and I'm just going to separate out a few bits here shove them underneath and then punch them into place and then that will give give the uh, strength back to those bits which is what I need just a bit doesn't need to be too much off go so this this really quite high quality um, roving I got it from Australia I believe it or not Good stuff, good and tough.
I've laid out the animals um, in the position on the back side. So that was a little challenging because it's the reverse and then you punch through. And then I've got to add a little bit of extra roving wool top to make them stand out and punch through to the other side. So I think it's going to look quite decent. As you can see I've put, you know, the backing is is white. I'm a little worried about what that might do. So my first attempt at the squirrel was a disaster. Well, a learning experience we'll call it. And what happened was by the time I punched all the felt in it, it started bubbling out in the middle. So even though I started from the center and worked out just because of the layers and not using a layer of felt underneath it just bubbled terribly. So I used my my uh, background as the support and that just was not good. So I'm going to create the squirrels and all the animals separately and then I'll attach them after the fact rather than felting them directly on. So I'm not going to really felt them, design them in place, but I'll attach them using a combination of stitches and felting in place. But it does hopefully prevent the bubbling. So the first thing is I'm starting in the middle, as you can see. And then I'll go in one direction to make sure that it's everything held in place. Back to the middle. And maybe on a 45 or a 60 to 30, 60 degree angle. Just to make sure everything's in place. Now I need to go down this way and I've got a pin in the way. So I will pull out the pin so I don't break any of my needles. Since I've just fitted them all back up. And go down to the end of the paw to make sure it's Place. I'm going to go down here just to make sure this is secure. And up to the middle again and then out and across. So it becomes a bit of a star pattern initially. And then I will add the direction of the design in later. So following around the edges and, and things like that. That will come later. So back to the middle. Now I need to go up to the top here to the head. So I'll just do here, watch from the pins. Back to the middle. So I've got another pin in the way here. On this bit here. Towards the nut and the, the front paws. So we'll just hold this in place while we do this. Do the nut since we're at this end. So the nuts in chocolate brown and on black, so you might not be able to see that super well. But we'll hopefully zoom in a bit more. And then we'll back out. I'm not punching the whole thing down and in one go. I want to just make sure it's secured in place first. So now I need to go up to the top. So if you look, I need to go up to the head here, and there's an eye piece. I'm going to go as far as I can, then it gets a bit exciting because I've got to get this eye underneath everything and keep it from shifting. So I'm just going to manually, I've got the pin in place, it's just held down. Now I can use the machine to secure the eye, and I'll do a little mini circle, and I'll go to the end. I've got a pin here sticking out for one of the ears, so I'll watch that. Um, what I'll do here is I'll just come up to the... Oop, spin around, actually. Oops, got a piece of paper here. I don't want to be squished into the felt. Just going to punch that down, pull out this pin, and then secure that ear in place just briefly. Make sure it doesn't skid anywhere, do anything strange. That ears held down, I'm good with that. Now I'll go back to the middle. Just make sure everything isn't bubbling, not stretching in the right direction. Okay. So now we'll do the second ear, and I'm just going to spin around on the eye here. So we're getting up to the pin, so I'll go to the middle of the ear, pull up the pin. finish the ears in place. So we're getting close to being able to follow the direction of the body 
but I need to first do the tail. And I need to secure the edge here just around the head. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start in the middle of the tail, and I'm going to work down first. It doesn't matter down or up, just to make sure you follow in the contours and going from the middle out. I'm going to do all of the edge. Really good and secure. And I've got an area with pins here, so I'll just undo that pin. I can hold this with my tweezers while we're doing the final securing. So not everything is in place yet. A bit of lifting from the leg there, but that's okay. I caught it. Put it back. Go back up to the top. So I'm going to add extra detail to the tail to make it more interesting. And then now we're going to go from the center of the tail to the top. So we're going to do a big arch here. Pull up the pin. Back. And you notice I don't go over the raw areas in the opposite direction. Go back to the middle and then over them, just to keep it from bubbling as much as possible. In the middle, now we can do the shape of the top of the tail, which is rounded. So now comes the edge securing, which has to be directional. So you need to follow the direction of the design. It doesn't matter so much always on the outside, but, so for instance on the body, you would always want to do loop circles round to make sure the shirt, the, the fur goes. It looks like it's creating fur, but in the direction of how the animal would go. And so when you're doing around the legs here, we've got this leg here. So we would want to do all around the thigh muscles in a circle. So it's really obvious this is the leg. And then it shows up. So we'll just continue going in circles, circles, circles. Find the center point, work out until you get to the edge of the leg. You can do slowly if you need more direction. Just so it's really directional. And the legs, of course, are straight. So we'd always want those straight into the, into the lower paws. So it's obvious what's foot. I've got that part done. Now we're going to go back and finish the body. So we're following the contours of the body here, which is around the back, the shape of the back. Take the back and into the head. Now the head, of course, is sort of a rounded shape, so we want to make the head its own complete entity. Similar sort of rounded shapes. Ears are straight up and down, but the head is round-ish. You know, follow a semicircular pattern. Then straight up and down the paws. Straight up and down the paws so that they're in the right direction. We'll go around the nut just to make it look nice. Down the paws, down the belly in a circle, down the belly in a circle, and then straight into the legs, straight into the legs, straight into the legs, and then the undercarriage in this long edge of the head. So I think that's done now. And what you can see is, hopefully zoom in, you can see that because I followed the directions of the body, you can see where the legs are naturally, the ears go up in the right direction, the head and the tail follows this. So I'll add more detail, but you know, that's a squirrel. There's no doubt. <laughs> um, so I will now do the rest. So I finished my bunny here. This will be attached to my work shortly. Now, if any of you have taken, bought any of Isabella Hoffman's books or done any of her video courses, you'll know that she always says start from the center and work out. And that's absolutely true because this does tend to stretch. And what I found is if you don't do it in that thing, you end up with bubbles in the middle. However, what's really quite nice is that when you're doing on the punched side as opposed to the softer side um, so you can see some of this stuff shows through but it's quite difficult to get a really good um, impact but however if you do it 
and you do your directions, you can actually get um, highlights of different act parts. So you can see here in the eye, it's, it's wanting to bubble a bit because that's just the nature of the layers and stuff. It does tend to bubble, so you have to watch that. Um, it's difficult to control. However, if you follow the directions, you get a more natural looking um, sort of progression of detail. And then I will highlight this as well with ink tents and other markers and then sewing to add some of the detail so it looks so it's obvious some of the bunny bits. Um, but anyway, that's that's Mr. Bunny. And there is Mr. Deer. Anyway, I hope you like this. Bye for now.